Hi, I'm Megan Carlton, the Science Librarian here at UNC Greensboro, and today I'm going to walk you through iNaturalist, which is a app that's used a lot for citizen science projects. Um, my obsession with citizen science began about a year and a half ago, and now I'm involved in a growing number of projects. Um, iNaturalist is one of my favorite platforms and the one we're going to be using for our bio blitz and photography. So what is citizen science? Um, according to Webster, it is scientific work undertaken by members of the general public, often in collaboration with or under the direction of professional scientists and scientific institutions. But more simply, it's just public participation in scientific research. But it can really be so much more than that. Citizen science is an invitation to everyone to participate in real science on topics that they care about. So this concept is, is not new. Um, lighthouse keepers began collecting data about bird strikes as long ago as 1880. Um, the National Audubon Society started its annual Christmas bird count in 1900 that is still going on today. And in 1992, the NSF funded a series of projects through Cornell called Public Participation in Ornithology, which is the study of birds that also still continues today. So the platform that we're gonna be using for this project is iNaturalist, which is a joint initiative by the California Academy of Sciences and the National Geographic Society. Observations recorded with iNaturalist provide valuable open data to scientific research projects, conservation agencies, other organizations, and the public. iNaturalist works by crowdsourcing observations and identifications of millions of plants and animals. An iNaturalist observation records an encounter with an individual organism at a particular time and place. In addition to recording actual audio and photos of the organism, an observation may also record evidence of an organism, such as animal tracks, nest, or, and scat. You don't have to worry about if you know what the specimen is. As long as you have pictures, other naturalists can help you identify them. Users add identifications to each other's observations in order to confirm or improve the community identification. Observations are classified as casual, needs ID, or research grade based on the quality of the data provided and the community identification process. Sharing your observations helps create quality data for scientists working to better understand and protect nature. Research applications include studies of nest ecology, detection of rare species, estimation of population size and species richness as well as research on habitat use and occupation of human built structures. And this helps expand the scope of conservation monitoring. The data collected can be used by agencies to target management of species of concern, such as threatened or endangered wildlife or invasive exotic species. So the first thing that you're gonna do to get started is to download iNaturalist on your phone or tablet. Um, once you, once you download the app, you'll be prompted to um, sign in or create a new account. Um, you can also do this at, on their website. If you plan on using a regular camera instead of your phone, um, you can do it this way and that way you can download the pictures to your computer and then upload them to iNaturalist, which I will walk you through um, both ways of taking pictures. So once you create a username, I'm going to want you to send that um, username to me and I will give you my email at the end of this um, presentation. So there are numerous projects on iNaturalist, um, including ours, and you don't um, you can join as many as you want. You're not limited to just use doing one at a time. Um, so like if you take a picture of a turtle, and you're part a, of a turtle project, that observation will go into both projects. So there are just tons of projects on iNaturalist. Feel free to explore them and join whichever ones pique your interest. But I've set this project to private, so I will need you to send me your username once you create one so I can add you to the project. So once you've joined, 
start taking pictures. Um, I definitely recommend taking multiple pictures of any organism that you find, um, if you can. Um, and that way, if it's kind of hard to determine what kind of animal it is having or plant, having multiple pictures can help people identify um, that organism for you. Um, it's also easiest if you turn on the geolocation aspect on your phone and that way it will record your coordinates and you won't have to try to figure that out later and it will also record the time and date all of that stuff for you. So with that every observation needs um, an identification of what you saw um, and this doesn't have to be perfect. Again other people will kind of crowdsource that information they'll use the pictures or sound or any evidence that you have of that organism, and they can help you identify it later. So like if you take a picture of a toad and aren't sure what it is, still upload it. Um, and you can leave it as something broad, like it's a frog or toad, and then other people can use those pictures to help identify the exact species. Um, you're also going to want to record when you saw it. So uh, the date is really important because um, that also helps contribute to kind of the study of when animals are migrating. It can really help them see how that's changing over time um, and then where you saw it. So make sure, again, I have that geolocation turned on or if you know your coordinates, you can put those in. And also there's a map feature that will help you um, pick where you saw that animal. But that's also really important for identifying what the species is. So if you have a picture of a lizard and you're in North Dakota, we know that that's probably not an iguana. Um, so having that location on can also help identify the species. And then every observation needs evidence, whether that's um, a picture, which hopefully it is for this project, or a sound clip, or it can be a picture of animal tracks. Um, any kind of evidence of that organism is what you can add to, um, to your observation. So when you download the app, um, it's, they make it really simple to take pictures in the moment. Um, and all you have to do is click that observe button and take your picture. I don't really recommend taking pictures as as the as you observe the organism because sometimes if they if they move or maybe if you don't get a good shot, um, it's harder to change that. The easier thing to do is to take pictures as you are out walking as you're as you're going about your day or as you see these organisms. And then you can add those pictures to the app later. Um, and I like to go through, take multiple pictures and pick the best ones and crop and make sure that's a really clear shot and upload those best pictures. So on the right here, that's gonna be, um, it's gonna have, once you click observe, it's going to have the button that you can go ahead and take the picture or the button where you can access your camera roll. So once you pick that picture that you want to add, um, so this one is a little skink that was in, uh, on, in my backyard, um, it's going to ask you what you saw. And when you click that button, it's going to give you these options over on the right. It's going to say, you know, really broad, we think this is a toothy skink, which it is. And then it's going to get more specific and say, hey, um, oh, wow, sorry, my mouse is very sensitive. Um, on the right, it's going to give you some species suggestions, and these are going to be based on your location. So if you have that turned on, it's going to say, hey, these are ones that live nearby. And it is true where this picture was taken, these um, top three right here, the common or the southeastern five line skink and the broadhead, um, those three all live in North Carolina. They've all been seen in my area. And the animal does look exactly like all three of those. Um, so if you're unsure about which exact species it is, you can pick that toothy skinks, pick that, that top, um, that kind of broader classification. And then other people will look and say what they suggest that it is. Um, and then again, on the left, it's gonna go ahead and add that time and date, and it's gonna add your location. Um, the coordinates, and then it's going to ask you how you want the geo privacy for this. So 
when the privacy is open, and actually I have a shot of this. Okay, so the picture on the left was where we lived right when we moved to North Carolina and right when I really became obsessed with iNaturalist. Um, every observation, I left the geolocation just open, you know, it didn't really matter. Um, and all of those observations were really pinpointed right around my house. Um, this doesn't share location to with the public. Um, but researchers, even if you obscure your location, if you're part of a specific project, they will be able to see kind of where that location is um, in case they, you know, there's invasive species or things like that and they need to know the location. Um, but in general, this is not going to be open to the public how specific it is. What is going to be kind of open to the public is when you obscure that location, it's going to look like the picture on the right. These are still all pictures I took around the house, but it just gives you a general idea of where those animals are. Um, it will also do this automatically if it's any animal that's threatened or endangered, um, like hellbenders, those huge salamanders, those are ones that are endangered. And so anytime you add an observation of those, it will automatically obscure it for the animal's safety. So now I'll show you the iNaturalist website. If you are taking pictures with your um, camera and you want to upload those, I'll show you how to do that. So first you're gonna want to download the pictures onto your computer. And then when you log into your iNaturalist account, right here, you're gonna click on add observations. And it's gonna ask you to choose those files. And again, it's really helpful to take multiple pictures of the organism. So right here, I'll add the first one of this tree I took in my backyard. And I'm actually gonna wanna add another picture. So I'll hit add photos and I'll go ahead and add a second picture that was a close up of the needles on this tree. So with this one, you're going to want to combine those pictures because they're, they're not separate observations, they're still the same um, organism. And then you just click combine and it'll add it to where there's multiple pictures of that tree. So again, you, it's, since I took this with my phone, it went ahead and added the time and date for me and it went ahead and added my location. And it tells you right here that the location is public and you can change that down to obscured just so they know it's in the general area. So for our species name, when you click in it, it's gonna automatically say, hey, we're pretty sure it's a juniper and here's some suggestions of ones that have been seen nearby. Um, but since I, I wasn't sure exactly which type it was, I'm just gonna pick junipers. And this is where as you take more and more pictures and do more observations, you'll get a better picture of like what you need to take pictures of. So like I know the Eastern red cedars, they have a little stripe on the bottom of their needles. I didn't get a picture of that. So maybe next time I take pictures, you know, I'll get my really good shot that I want, but then take some more detailed pictures to help identify it. So for this, I'm just gonna say, you know, it's a juniper. I'll let somebody else pick what it was. And then you can submit that observation. And it's going to go ahead and add it to your list of all the observations that you've done. And right here, it says needs ID. So everything on iNaturalist wants to be down to the species, um, um, identification. Um, and so other people will look at this, they'll look at my pictures, and they'll start suggesting what they think that is. So now I'm going to stop sharing. So there, there's just a ton of information out there um, as far as, you know, different tips and hints on how to use a naturalist, but I'm very open to, you know, meeting up with you on Zoom and helping you kind of walk through, or if you have any specific questions, please let me, let me know. Um, you can shoot me an email, which don't forget to send me an email with your um, iNaturalist username, and I can help do some of those uh, identifications for you also. But thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing what kind of 
organisms y'all get pictures of. 